Why, hello, and welcome to Who We Are Part 2. We'll be starting where I left off in Part 1 in 3, 2... A loud crash catapulted Twilight out of bed. She landed on all fours, her knees bent, heart pounding in her chest, and horn buzzing with energy as she sought for the intruder. In her state of panicked hyper-awareness, she noticed several things. One, it was early morning, perhaps even pre-dawn. Two, that same light revealed that neither Spike nor Fluttershy were still in their respective beds. Three, Spike had dug his claws into her ceiling and was wide-eyed and awake as she was. Oh my goodness! Under normal circumstances, the soft voice wouldn't have been audible. Only under the adrenaline pumping through her system made Twilight aware enough to make out the words. They had come from right outside her door. With an effort of will and a flash of white, she winked out of reality and reappeared on the other side of the door, ready to face this menacing Fluttershy? She yelped in surprise. With a yelp of her own, the Pegasus leapt into the air, legs windmilling as her wings clamped into her sides. The covered tray she had been attempting to lift onto her back fell to the floor again with a clatter. Twilight saw the muscles on Fluttershy's back bulge as they fought to open her wings to no avail. Shortly after leaping into the air, she fell to the ground, legs locked as she rolled onto her back. Oh, Twilight, she said. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to... Um, are you okay? Twilight answered as she levitated away the tray. As she rolled over to get to her own hooves, she nodded. I'm sorry about the noise. I didn't mean to wake you. What were you doing anyway? Twilight asked as she brought the tray to hover in front of her and lifted the cover off. Inside was a sopping mess of orange juice, toasted oats, some kind of salad, and soggy remains of toast. Twilight stared at the ruins of the, by her standards, extravagant feast. You made all this? For me? Well, I didn't know what you liked, and I wanted to thank you for letting me stay over and help, and helping me take care of the animals, and... Fluttershy hung her head. I'm sorry. No, no, it's, it's fine, Twilight quickly assured her friend. I just never expected... You didn't... Awkward silence filled the hallway as the two ponies struggled to find something to say to the other other than apologies. They were saved from the dire embarrassment as Spike opened the bedroom door, his hand not quite up to the task of hiding his yawn from the mares. Oh, hi, Fluttershy, he said, stretching his arms high above his head. Both of his eyes closed as another jaw popper struggled forth. Fluttershy blinked as she was given an unprecedented view of a non-scary dragon's mouth. She blinked again and drew back a little as the youngster's breath hit her. Oh, is that toast? Spike grabbed the spongy bread slices from the tray and popped them into his mouth. And orange juice! His eyes opened wide in excitement. Thanks, Fluttershy! He grabbed a hold of the tray and yanked it from Twilight's spell. Twilight never makes me breakfast! This is great! The two ponies stared in shock as the dragon wandered downstairs, still picking choice morsels from the tray and exclaiming over their flavor. Once he had disappeared around the curve of the stairway, the silence returned. Twilight? T Twilight? Fluttershy's voice seemed to shatter the quiet. Th thanks again for letting me sleep here. I'm, um, it, it means a lot. Oh, uh, it was no big deal. Twilight smiled and stood a little straighter. Etiquette required she downplay the thanks. Etiquette required that she downplay the thanks. Fluttershy shook her head. I, I mean, you let me stay here with you, alone, after the letter. Her voice trailed off, and a small frown played across her face. Twilight's pupils contracted as she realized what Fluttershy was trying to say. She had let a potential changeling spend the night in her room. The thought had never crossed her mind. Oh, I, I... Twilight stammered as the implications hammered home. But there's no way you'd ever do anything to me, Fluttershy. Fluttershy smiled at her. I really need to go give Angel his breakfast. He'll get grumpy if I don't. She gave the still-shocked Twilight a nuzzle, and with a quiet, Thanks again, she hopped into the air and glided down the stairs. Twilight spooned in another mouthful of cereal and chewed without enthusiasm. Her mind was too busy turning over the chain of events from last night that had led her into placing herself and Spike in danger. Fluttershy could be a changeling. She had known that. It was the reason she'd invited her friends over to stay with her. How could she have slipped up and let just one of them sleep over? Did this mean that Fluttershy wasn't a changeling? 
She had been completely at the other mare's mercy all night. Fluttershine could have. Could have what? Try as she might, not matter how she twisted it in her head, the concept of Fluttershy so much as striking her while she slept seemed alien. The pony that she'd known all these months couldn't have done it to her. She was far too kind. So Fluttershy could be a normal pony, and she wouldn't do anything to Twilight. Or she was a changeling trying to throw her off by pretending to be a normal pony who wouldn't ever hurt her. Either way, if Nightmare Moon and Discord's defeats were anything to go by, she had to embody the element of kindness. That meant for the other four as well. One couldn't simply pretend to be loyal or generous. A pony had to embody that ideal in order to wield one of the elements. There was no way to fake that. This realization left her in an uncomfortable position of most agreeing with Rainbow Dash. The princess just might be wrong. At the thought of her friend, Twilight glanced out her window. The weather schedule had called for a clear morning but fully half of the horizon was still dotted with clouds, turning orange in the light of dawn. A single pink-orange pluff vanished as a dark speck collided with it. Rainbow Dash was still hard at work. A sudden desire to share her realization overwhelmed her. She wanted, no, needed to talk with some pony about her sudden doubt in her mentor. Levitating the remains of her breakfast into the sink, she trotted out the door, reminding herself not to gallop so soon after eating. She hurried down towards the town hall, where the majority of the clouds had yet to be cleared. Twilight spent several minutes casting her eyes about for the colorful flyer before spotting Rainbow Dash. She had been hovering upright in midair, hanging from her wings, all four legs limp and eyes closed. Her mouth opened and closed in time with her breathing. Twilight fancied she could hear soft snoring from the ground. Rainbow! Rainbow Dash! she called. Receiving no response, she reached out with her magic and gave the other mare's tail a light tug, followed shortly by a solid yank. Rainbow! The pegasus yawned, stretching her foreleg above her head. Oh, hey, hey, Twilight, she said through another yawn. What are you doing up so early? Rainbow, I, I need to talk to you. The words brought the pegasus sailing down and landing next to her. Sure thing, Twy. Dash smiled and then yawned again. She shook her head, sending her mane bouncing. Um, it's, it's about the letter. Dash's smile slackened, fading to a scowl. She crouched and her wings flared, looking for all the world like she was ready to attack the unicorn. Listen, Twilight, I know this seems like a nifty problem to solve or something, she growled. But I... Tell me why, Twilight blurted out, cutting Rainbow Dash's rant short. Dash's wings slowly relaxed as she straightened. Why? Yes, tell me why you don't believe the letter. Dash sat back onto her haunches, a frown forming as her brow furrowed. Her mouth opened, but she shut it again without talking, ears drooping. She became very interested in a turf of grass several yards away. Just as Twilight was about to ask again, Dash spoke. It's Pinky, isn't it? Dash's voice came out low as she was murmuring it only to herself. She's the only one that works. As Dash turned to look at her again, Twilight's jaw fell, tears threatening to overflow Rainbow's eyes. It can't really be AJ or Rarity. They grew up here. I know it's not me, and I've known Fluttershy for way too long. If she'd been replaced, I'd know. So that leaves Pinky. Dash sniffled and wiped her nose. I, I thought... I thought I knew her. But if she's... If she can pretend to be... To be Pinky... What else is pretend? Is... Are, are we pretend? Twilight took a hesitant step towards Dash, and then quickly moved to the mare's side. Dash leaned against her, hiding her face in Twilight's mane. After a few moments, Dash drew away, wiping her eyes on a foreleg. A red rim and a final sniffle were the only signs of her momentary weakness. That's why she has to be wrong. Because I won't accept a world where Pinky is playing with me like that. Twilight tried to imagine the crushing blow Dash's denial was protecting her from. To think that the pony you were closest to had been playing you for a fool, she could hardly comprehend it. Just trying to imagine Celestia telling her something like that, that she was only a means to rescue her sister from a nightmare, toward her soul. She knew now that Dash's denial was not based on logic or some kind of disclosed tidbit of knowledge. 
It was sheer refusal to accept a world too painful to bear. Dash was holding up remarkably well under such a flimsy shield. You know, denial's actually a pretty interesting thing. Because if you lie to yourself enough, and if you're surrounded by people who will continue your fantasy world, you can live within a fictitious phantasm. I mean, take a... Okay, remember Amy's Baking Company? Uh, it was on Kitchen Nightmares. It's an infamous episode where there's this total crazy cunt, Amy and her husband. And they are just the worst people imaginable. And she lives within this fictitious reality that she is a great chef. And everyone around her either feeds into her delusion because, I don't know, for some reason they, they really like her, like her husband. Or they're just frightened and will continue her crazy, crazy, crazy fantasy world. And... <laughs> If you watch it, you will really be disgusted. She is just one of the most wretched people ever. And I kind of feel sorry for her. <laughs> it's just awful. Uh, yeah, you know, denial is an interesting thing. Because if you lie to yourself enough, you know, th that's going to become the truth. And if any of the main six were to face denial and uh, perpetually believe that denial, I think it would be Rainbow Dash, because she doesn't really seem that intellectually savvy. Twilight would probably look things through logically. Sorry, I, I went off on a huge tangent. I'll get back to the story. Dash was holding up remarkably under such a flimsy shield. What if she isn't? Twilight's voice shattered the silence. Faking it, I mean. Huh? Well... You clearly believe that if one of us is a changeling, it's her. Dash opened her mouth to protest, but Twilight gave her no time to get a word in. I could point out how changeling magic can alter minds, but you've already fabricated a worst case scenario and it's eating you. Twilight poked Dash in the chest and locked eyes with her. So just be quiet and listen. Twilight held eye contact until Dash closed her mouth and nodded. Remember when I was trying to tell you girls that Cadence was acting weird? Another nod and a slight blush. Well, I knew something was wrong because Cadence doesn't act like that. If she could have, she could have emulated her personality, too. I know that, Twilight. Dash rolled her eyes. You've pointed that out more than once. And I'll point it out again and again until you get it. Twilight narrowed her eyes. It doesn't matter if Pinky is a changeling or not, because the Pinky we know is her real personality. Dash tilted her head and her brow furrowed. She stared at Twilight in confusion as her mouth faded into a slight frown. Twilight closed her eyes and rubbed that spot just under her horn. Okay, let's try this a different way. What if Rarity dyed Pinky blue and styled her mane? Would she still be Pinky? Dash cocked an eyebrow. Duh. It's not like some dye in a mane cut would change who she is. That's just crazy. What if it was really well done? As in, good enough to fool any pony who saw her. Dash rolled her eyes and snorted. Yeah, okay, but the first time she opened her mouth, or tried to throw a party, or made a face, it'd be totally obvious it was Pinky. Dash glared at Twilight. It's like you're saying I only care about her because of what she... Dash's features relaxed, and her voice dropped to a whisper. Looks like... The Pegasus rocked back onto her haunches, her eyes unfocused and her mouth forming an O. Twilight fought back the urge to giggle at her friend's antics, but couldn't keep a smile from forming on her face. Dash only needed some pony to force her to actually think about her problems for a minute. Maybe now that it wouldn't seem to be a solution to Dash's problem, she could bring up her own doubts and worries. She needed some pony to tell her that she was right and explain how Celestia could have been mistaken, or that she was wrong and why. Thanks, Twy. I really owe you. Dash said before taking off. I'll catch you later, she called over her shoulder as she sped back into the sky. But... Twilight reached a hoof towards the receding Pegasus. She could shout or use her magic. She could demand Dash help her with her silly issue. But what was the point? She could not help Twilight. Dash hadn't doubted the letter for any rational reasons. Twilight needed irrefutable logic, not an emotional appeal.
Twilight turned and trudged back to the library. She needed to think about this more. What? asked Applejack, one brow cocked. She challenged Rarity and Fluttershy with her gaze. The two mares glanced at each other. Fluttershy sported a slight smile while Rarity's face was set up in a face of severe disapproval. Will one of y'all say something? My dear, you simply cannot show up to the spa looking like... like that. Rarity's waving hoof encompassed all of Applejack's mud-coated figure. You simply look filthy. No offense, darling. I thought the whole point of this frou-frou nonsense was to get clean. Applejack snorted, then turned to spit. Pardon? Fluttershy cringed away from the crude display. Trying and failing to maintain her smile, she said, Oh, it is, but it's not like a river or a pond. Rarity made no such attempt at diplomacy. Applejack! Her voice managed to convey almost the entirety of disgust at the rural antics of her friend. It was at the same tone of voice AJ herself reserved for the word citrus. You get it? Because, you know, citrus, oranges, apples and oranges. It's assumed, at least in the uh, fandom, that Applejack has a disgust for oranges. Ha ha, it's a cute little joke! It's a little joke, yee -hee. yee -hee. Alright, I'll continue. I will not tolerate such unrefined barbarity in my presence. Um, maybe I could go see what's keeping Twilight, Fluttershy offered. Furthermore, such a crude disregard for our host establishment is simply rude. Rarity tried her best to loom over Applejack. Her graceful height and years of practice projecting her presence made for a noble attempt. It was doomed to fail, but the attempt was no less impressive for its brevity. As the immaculate unicorn drew herself up, so did the stubborn earth pony. Further and further they stretched, closer and closer their faces crept, each trying to overawe the other. Rarity focused her disgust of dirt and grime, Applejack her sheer stubbornness, until it seemed that the very air would ignite between them. Or maybe we could check on Pinky? Or, or Rainbow Dash? Closer the two drew. The closer the two drew, until the front curl of Rarity's mane made contact with Applejack's mud-caked forehead. Jerking her head away, Rarity's eyes focused on the purple locks and the fleck of brown now staining them. She began to shiver and shake, like Pinkie Pie on the dooziest of days. Emitting a high-pitched squeal as she danced in place, her hooves kicked up a cloud of dust as they pounced into the ground at a frenzied pace. I'll just be- I'll just be off then, if that's okay with you. Fluttershy took the lack of any kind of response as the scent and flew as fast as her wings could take her. Oh, my mane! My beautifully sculpted mane! Calm down, Rarity, said Applejack, not even attempting to wipe the smirk off her face. Ain't like you're not already at the spa. Her words fell on deaf ears and the unicorn continued to flail in place. Shrugging, Applejack walked around Rarity, leaning forward her jaw open to grasp the doorknob to the main entrance of the luxury Lotus Spa. As her teeth closed around the brass, she gave a single brief prayer of thanks that the fastidious ponies around the place took care enough to ensure that the earth ponies and pegasi didn't have to taste anything unpleasant on their way in. A simple push door would have been nice. Right as her teeth made contact, she noticed that the shrill, piercing cry emanating from the fussiest of her friends had ceased. Applejack! The menace dripping from each syllable of her name sent icy shivers running down her back. She turned, lest she give Rarity an advantage in whatever was about to happen. Rarity herself was breathing heavily, her legs set in a wide stance with a grimace etched onto her face. Held aloft in a field of gleaming blue were the instruments of her wrath. A garden hose, a wash bucket, a stiff bristled brush. You wouldn't. Applejack's eyes grew wide as Rarity shifted her weight and drew a foreleg back slightly. With a cry more suited to the ancient battles common before the founding of Equestria, Rarity leapt. Pinky smiled to herself as she fondled... Fondled. <laughs> Pinky sang to herself as she folded the tiny chocolate chip muffins into her mixing bowl. Giggling, she licked her hoof clean with a fruity batter. She had resolved last night to make her chocolate chip muffin chip muffins. 
but only after Rainbow Dash had come home, eaten her pancakes, and then fallen asleep at the table had she gotten the idea to add raspberry mix sprung into her head. Fucking, this isn't even written right. And then fallen asleep at the table had the idea to add raspberry to the mix sprung into her head. Deciding that she had enough chocolate chip chips. Enough chippy chips. <laughs> Decide, deciding that dick was too small for her, she decided to get a bigger one and then... <sighs> deciding that she had enough chocolate chip muffin chips for now, she tipped the bowl onto its side, pouring the gooey mixture into heart-shaped muffin tins. She giggled again. Dash always complained and made faces when she used them. But then they always had the best cuddles afterwards. Though she loathed to admit it, Pinky could really use a hug right now. A thump and a crash from upstairs signaled that Rainbow was now awake. Even after two months of napping at Pinky's almost every day, the Pegasus still had to remember that the floor was only a few feet below when she rolled out of bed. Pinky nosed the muffin tray into the oven and pressed the timer. A clip-clop from above let her know Dashie was really awake and was climbing back onto her hooves. It was only seconds before Rainbow made her way downstairs. Luckily, she threw a few pastries onto a wire rack and splashed a bowl of glaze and another sprinkle onto the fruit-filled treats. They were strawberry, one of Dash's favorites, even if the Pegasus didn't like to admit liking something that wasn't especially cool. She gave the treats a bare three and a seventh shakes of her tail to cool before she gave the rack a kick, launching them in an arc through the kitchen area and onto a waiting tray. It was a good thing Dashie slept so late. The lunch crowd had come and had gone already, so she'd be able to spend a lot of time getting hugs. And if any pony else came in, she might even coax out a few nuzzles. Hiya, Pinks! Dash said as she landed at the base of the stairs. She yawned, cracking her jaw as she stretched out her wings and forelegs. Dashie! Pinky squealed as she launched herself at Rainbow, wrapping her forelegs around the Pegasus and clinging to her. I missed you! She said, bouncing as she held onto the Pegasus. A bubbly tingle filled her as she felt Dash put a foreleg around her neck. Pinky grinned as she squeezed tighter feeling the warmth from the other mare. Closing her eyes, her smile widened as the hug continued. Dash often broke from their hugs long before they could get to this point where happiness began to tingle at the back of her ears and bring out giggles no matter how hard she tried to stop them. Even nibbling on a stray bit of purple mane or an ear wasn't enough after a while. Pinky resolutely took a frizzled lock of blue and green into her mouth, determined to make this hug last long as possible. That's kind of gross. I mean, if you're gonna hug someone, even if it is your special someone, I mean, you don't take their hair into your mouth. That's just fucked up. At least that's my opinion. I mean, I've never done that, but whatever. You can do whatever you want. Well, as long as it's not to the expense of the other person, mind you. Pinky! Dash turned her head, tugging to scrape the mane out of Pinky's mouth. About last night. I'm sorry. Dash's voice sounded a teensy bit tired, like she had last year after practicing all day long for the best young flyers competition. Brimming with happiness at another hug successfully concluded, Pinky stepped back into the side so she could meet Dash's eyes. About what? She said. Without giving any time for Rainbow Dash to answer, she gasped. Was it because you totally got my almost complete set of threes? No. Was it because you ate both of my pumpkin swirl cupcakes? Pinky, I... Oh, it must be because you... Pinky! Dash's voice was much louder now, and that draggy, still tired feeling was completely gone. Mission accomplished. Pinky grinned and relented, bouncing, as she waited for Dash to finish with her silly, not-needed apology. Rainbow kept her annoyed fixed glare on Pinky for a near record setting seven seconds before her frown broke into a slight grin and she rolled her eyes. It's not about the games. I'm... Dash took a deep breath and let it out again. Slowly. 
I'm sorry for being such a jerk at your party. Pinky's eyes widened as the party came rushing back to her. The shouting, the arguing, the mean voices and faces all ran through her mind like a bowling ball through a snow cone, shattering colored fragments everywhere. What? Uh, okay. Um, all right. It's an interesting uh, little metaphor you got there. The image of Rainbow angrily taking the offensive, shouting down her friends, rage barely contained behind her eyes, flew through her mind. Whoa! Dash's voice sounded surprised. Is that Pinky Sense? For the first time, Pinky realized that she was shivering, even though it wasn't cold at all. It would have been nice to say yes to that question, but it wasn't true. She shook her head while trying to avoid Dash's gaze, but dating an athlete had its disadvantages too. Dash was too quick. When she next blinked, she was gazing into a set of Rose eyes. With a start, Rainbow realized that Pinky didn't know that she'd calmed down. The other mare probably worried that she'd start yelling again. Oh jeez, Pinky! Dash recoiled, a look of horror flashing across her face. It's not bad, I swear. You, you promise? She hadn't asked the question since they started dating. She never needed to before, but this was important. Pinky promise. Dash sat back and half-heartedly performed gestures that would generously be called for an approximation of the pinky promise. Cross my heart, hope to fly, stick a cock in my eye. <laughs> That's not how it goes. Cross my heart, hope to fly, yada yada, something I. Despite the way her insides felt like they'd be turning into ice cream and that had been left outside for five, maybe six hours, Pinky couldn't help but smile at Dash's attempt. Okay then, she chirped, summoning images from last night to combat the silly, ghosty thoughts in her head. Dash's promise helped drive them out of her mind, giving her head a quick shake. Just in case any silly pictures were clinging to her ears, she focused on the other mare and waited. Dash looked down at her hooves, then scratched the back of her neck before looking up and examining the ceiling joists. Dash still wasn't looking at her when she started talking. I had a talk with Twilight this morning, about... Dash paused and her eyes slowly met with hers. About you. About me? Pinky tilted her head. Dash sighed, her wingtips lowering to the ground. I'm, so I'm sorry, Pinky, but I thought you were the changeling. Before she'd a chance to reply, her voice was filled with Dash's hoof. And I thought that if you've been lying about that, and then if you've been lying about other stuff too, like us, me, whatever. Dash's tail flicked, the cascading rainbow drawing Pinky's attention for a moment. She asked around the hoof in her mouth, tilting her head slightly. No, that's not all. I got really mad at every pony, especially AJ. Every time they insisted the letter was true, all I heard was, Pinky doesn't love you, and... Pinky spat Dash's hoof out of her mouth, and she pressed her muzzle against her girlfriend's. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard, she quipped before closing her eyes and pressing her lips against Dash's. The Pegasus didn't normally like makeouts in public, any more than she liked hugs, but Rainbow threw herself against Pinkie Pie and didn't pull away. It was Pinkie who had to break the kiss. Her nose was squished up against Dash's, and she'd been getting all lightheaded and woozy in the corner of her vision was getting the tiniest bit of black. It wasn't fair. Dash was hardly winded. So yeah, I guess that was pretty stupid, huh? Dash's grin made Pinky want to risk blacking out, which was like falling asleep, which was the worst thing ever because it meant she might miss something fun. Again, Rainbow lowered her eyes. I still, I still kind of think it's you. You know. Pinky's ears twitched and her eyes shot open. You do? Dash nodded. Yeah, I kind of do. And if it is, I guess I kind of understand not telling. It's not like it matters. Much. Pinky beamed. So you're not mad at any pony from last night? Uh, no. 
Her eyelids lowered halfway, sending an almost palpable wave of heat towards the Pegasus. The widening smile didn't do much to ruin the effect. And you're not just after Pinky for a smoking hot body, right? Dash smirked. I wouldn't go that far. She said, rolling her eyes in her entire head. I mean, Pinkie Pie comes in a pretty nice package. And you wouldn't mind if Pinkie had secrets? Pinkie bumped her foreleg into Dash softly. Well, Dash murmured. There's one thing I'd be mad at you for. Oh? Is it, is it about the wasp thing? No, silly. Dash chuckled, her cheeks turning red. If you are a changeling, then we could have been staying at my place this whole time. And why would we do that? The bakery's here, Dashie. Dash's face fell as she struck out her tongue and made a fake gagging sound. Mattresses suck, Pinky. Now, would you like the daisy scent or the honeysuckle? Rarity asked as she needlessly scanned the spa's stock of shampoos. She knew Lotus's sister's stock by heart. But it never hurt to make sure some new product had not escaped her notice. Oh, perhaps you'd like this hay and pomegranate one. Maybe this raspberry. And Applejack shook her head and she stopped paying attention to Rarity's fussing. She didn't really like coming to the spa much. Sure, relaxing in a warm bath was a great way to unwind after a long day working on the farm. But it was only mid-afternoon and the spa entailed so much more frilly nonsense than warm bath should have been attached to it. Sniffing the sweet-scented water, her muzzle crinkled as she muttered some choice words about the kind of ponies who needed even their water to smell funny. The sole reason she had come was to spend time with all of her friends, and they were late. Applejack! Her name drew her attention back towards the other mare, who had one brow cocked and her mouth curved into a concerned frown. Is something the matter, dear? You look positively incensed! Are you saying that I smell? Applejack snapped. Before Rarity could do more than drop her mouth in shock, Applejack sighed. I'm sorry, Rarity. I just ain't too happy with all this frill and nonsense. I didn't get much sleep last night, neither. Rarity's expression melted into a sympathetic, wry smile. I didn't get my usual beauty sleep, neither, Applejack. Rarity reached up a hoof to flip her mane, which had been placed into a curler already. That ghastly comment you made last night had me fretting for hours, you know? Applejack slumped forward in the water, dropping her head until her muzzle was a bare fraction of an inch above the pool. She let out a deep sigh. Rarity, I ain't exactly thrilled about it myself, and I can't say that ain't the biggest reason when I'm so riled up today. Her eyes opened as she stared down at a reflection in the surface. And I'm sorry about being so short with you. But I just can't help to think about it. She turned to look at Rarity, her eyes seeming to droop. One of my best friends in all the Questry has been lying to me, possibly for years. I... She shook her head. I just don't know how to deal with that. Sighing again, Applejack deflated, slumping down until her nose was just above the water line. How can you just trust a pony who lies about their face? It's like trying to fake who she is by changing what she looks like. Rarity pursed her mouth and brought up a hoof to her chin as she rolled her eyes and thought. Does it really bother you that much? Rarity asked, her voice tinged with concern. At Applejack's raised brow, she clarified. Some pony who alters her appearance in order to make a better impression on others. Some pony who uses her looks to her advantage in social situations. Rarity paused for a moment and then spoke again. Her voice was subdued. Some pony... Like me. Applejack frowned and studied the water in front of her. Rarity's mouth curved into a larger and larger frown as she stared back at Applejack, scarcely breathing as she waited for an answer. Rarity, you're a great pony and all, always willing to help in your own way, and I love you for who you are. She paused for a moment, closing her eyes to breathe deeply. She continued, But I can't say it sits well with me all the time. The way you gussy yourself up, and get all flirty with ponies sometimes. You make me sound like a floozy. Dag nab it, Rarity, you ain't no floozy, and I'm not good at making speeches like this. Applejack sighed. Look, what I'm trying to say is you mostly seem to do it for yourself. You ain't just being beautiful to get things from other ponies, even if you do sometimes. 
Just like Rainbow don't do her tricks and stuff just so ponies will cheer her on. Even if she does like it, that's just fine. Applejack scratched her neck. I guess what I'm trying to say is you ain't, a, you ain't changing your looks to fool no pony into thinking you're somebody you ain't. And that matters. There was a long, awkward silence as Rarity digested what Applejack had told her. For her part, the farmer tried to think of something, anything to restart the conversation on a different topic. She didn't want to talk about changelings, or dresses, or nothing, just as she was going to get desperate and bring up a subject like main care. Rarity spoke. I just had a most, well, not disturbing, but rather disruptive thought. Rarity's brow was now knitted as she stared off at nothing. What if... She trailed off. What if... What, what if what? Asked Applejack after a long thought. No, never mind. It's silly, really. Rarity put on a false smile and waved a hoof as if she was tossing her last musing aside. Come on, Rarity. Can't be any sillier than half of things we could pretend to talk about. Sighing, Rarity twirled a loose end of her mane with her hoof. Well, what if our changeling friend wasn't trying to fool any pony about who she was? Applejack rolled her eyes and snorted. Rarity, that's what they do. They pretend to be some pony else and feed on love. Heck, that big high and mighty princess changing herself told us. They pretend to be some pony we love and feed on that love. Rarity was already shaking her head. No, I don't mean the way she looks, Rarity said, examining the tip of her hoof. Her nose cringed in disgust as she found a small chip of imperfection. She shook her head and looked back at Applejack. I mean, what if she's acting, being, herself? I doubt you would think of me any different if I was the same color as dear Pinky. But that's different! Applejack's voice was raised. She, she would hardly be welcomed in Ponyville, where she not appears a pony. Rarity smoothly interjected. Were I a changeling who wished to live in peace and create dresses, I too would disguise myself as a normal. Or have you forgotten about how we all treated Zakora when she arrived? Angry denial died on Applejack's lips as Rarity's words struck home. It was true. They had judged Zakora harshly for simply looking scary. A changeling in its natural state was much scarier and stranger than Zakora had ever been. Ah, uh, uh, you're right. Applejack sounded surprised to hear herself say that. Ponyville'd never give her a chance, would we? Grimacing, Rarity shook her head. It pains me to admit it, but I don't think we would. Now don't that beat all. Now it was Applejack's turn to stare off vacantly. She opened her mouth, but at that moment the door to the spa was flung open. Okay, so I've gone through probably about the same as I did for the first part, and I think I'm done reading for now. Um, there's going to be one more part to this, and it'll be the concluding part. So don't you worry your little heads, okay? We'll get through this story together. I'll probably finish it by the end of the week. And we'll have super fun time and we can move on to something else. If you have any suggestions for future fanfiction readings, put them in the comments below and I might give it a look. And if it looks not stupid, then I might give it a read. So you can get your fanfiction read if you really want. Alright, see you next time. Goodbye.